Hello students, in paper 19b, Cell and Molecular Biology of MSc Semester 4th Zoology of MDS University Ajmer, in the chapter Centrifugation, we are studying about Ultra Centrifugation. I am Dr. Bharti Prakash, Associate Professor, Department of Zoology, SPC, Government College, Ajmer. In the previous lecture, we had studied about preparative ultra centrifugation today we will be discussing about analytical centrifugation in the analytical ultra centrifuge the optical systems are designed to determine concentration distribution of the sediment during the measurement the an analytical centrifugation is used to determine the mass and shape of macromolecules like the protein complexes and it is also used to determine the rate of sedimentation of molecules. Through the rapid spinning and imposing of high centrifugal forces on the suspended particles or even on the molecules in the solutions, it causes separations of matter on the basis of differences in their weight. The two kinds of experiments that are commonly performed by the ultra centrifuge are number one the sedimentation velocity experiments and the other is sedimentation equilibrium experiments. The ultra sorry the analytical ultra centrifuge consists of four principal parts. It has the drive and the speed control. It has temperature control. It has a vacuum system and it consists of the rotors. Now, let us study what are the features of analytical centrifuge. The speed, first of all the speed, it can run at about 70,000 rpm. It has a high speed of 70,000 rpm and the relative centrifugal force or the RCF is as high as 5 lakh gravity. The rotor chambers are refrigerated and they are evacuated to reduce the friction. The volume that can be contained in a single tube or the volume which is accommodated in a single tube is 0.2 to 5.5 ml. The separate particles, they can separate the particles as less as 10 microns. These are equipped with self-balance system and microprocessor control. The optical systems in analytical centrifuge are designed to determine the concentration and distribution of the sediment during the measurement. The important points to note here are that the analytical ultra centrifuge spins the rotor at an accurately controlled speed and temperature. It also has an overspeed system which controls the explosion of rotor at a very high speed. There are three types of optical systems which are available. First is the light absorption system, there is the scleron system and there is the relay inframetric system. The simplest type of rotor that the rotors here in the centrifuge are also specially designed but the simplest type of rotor has two cells the analytical cell we can say here in the diagram the analytical cell and the counterpoise cell the counterpoise cell balances the analytical cell Let us first study about the light absorption system. The light absorption system in this the light of a suitable wavelength is passed through the moving analytical cell containing the solution under analysis. The intensity of the transmitted light is recorded either on the photographic plate or by an automatic single or split beam photoelectric scanning system. 
The scanning system has an advantage of allowing the direct visualization of the results at any particular time. The different wavelengths of light can be selected, enabling the separate movement of a single component in a mixture of substances. Then the second type is system is the scleron optical system. Here, this depends upon the fact that if light passes through a solution of different density zones, it is refracted at the boundary between these zones. The optical system here records the changes in the refractive index of the solution, which is either an indicator or concentration. Then comes the relay inferometric optical system. This uses a double sector cell. One sector contains the sediment while the other contains the solution. The optical system measures the difference in the refractive index between the reference solvent and the solution by the displacement of interference fringes which is caused by liquid columns. Each fringe tracing the curve of the refractive index gradient against distance in the cell. Since the position of the fringes is determined by the solid concentration, it is possible to measure the concentration of solute at any point along the cell. Now what are the advantages of the analytical centrifugation? In analytical centrifugation, it can use very small sample size. We can use small sample size less than 1 ml. The built-in optical system in them is used to analyze progress of molecules during the centrifugation and these are used to precisely determine the sedimentation coefficient and the molecular weight of the molecules. Now what are the applications of analytical centrifuges? They are used in the determination of relative molecular mass. They are used in the estimation of purity of macromolecules. These instruments are used in determining the purity of DNA preparations, the viruses and proteins. The first requirement is the assessment of homogeneity. Homogeneity can be presumed only through the absence of detectable heterogeneity. Homogeneity is usually recognized by a single sharp symmetrical sedimenting boundary throughout the duration of sedimentation velocity experiments. And the impurities in the preparation are displayed as the additional peaks. So the estimation of purity of macromolecules can be attained by analytical centrifugation and the third application is the determination of conformational changes in the macromolecules. The conformational changes in macromolecules for example DNA can be determined by analytical centrifugation. DNA may exist as single or double strands each of which may be either linear or circular in nature. When exposed to a variety of agent, drugs or chemicals or elevated temperature, the DNA molecules may undergo a number of reversible or irreversible changes. These changes may be ascertained by examining differences in the sedimentation velocity of the sample. Similarly, conformational changes of proteins and disaggregation into subunits that is the protomeres may readily be studied by analytical centrifugation. So students we have finished with the centrifuges we have studied different types of centrifuges we have studied about the types of rotors 
we studied about the preparative and analytical ultra centrifuge in the next lecture we will take up the differences the similarities and the differences in preparative and analytical ultra centrifugation till then thank you take care